hey girl welcome back to my channel this is going to be here again with a new tutorial in today's video we'll be making this gorgeous gorgeous zara cap with the double bulb detailing behind i got a request from a client recently to make this for her for a particular outfit and i thought to film the entire process because i knew that my youtube fan would definitely be interested in something like this if you're interested in knowing all about this process please make sure you watch the video to the end if you have questions for me feel free to drop it in the comments please 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 also if at the end of watching you enjoyed watching please be sure to hit the like button that button helps me know that you guys enjoyed watching the video if you're yet to subscribe please subscribe turn on your post notifications so you don't miss out on any tutorial that i drop on here on the channel finally please be sure to share with your friends and family and just engage on this video now that i said all of that let's get straight into making this gorgeous gorgeous zara cap let's go Alright guys, so I'll start off by showing you everything you need to make your Zara cap. You need your fabric of choice. For me, I'm working with Ashio Cake. You also need elastic because we'll be attaching elastic to the back of the cap. You need your glue of choice. For me, I'm working with this UHU glue. You need your tape rule for taking measurements. You need something called Marco. I believe I've shared this material in a different video. I'm going to link that video on the screen. So yeah, feel free to go watch that video. You also need your ruler for ruling out measurements. The next thing we are going to do now is to cut out our fabric. I already have my ashoke cut out in three pieces. Okay, my ashoke is six inches wide and 30 inches long. Okay, the actual head circumference of my client is 22 inches, but I added eight extra inches because I'm going to be adding elastic to this fabric. Feel free to take your own head measurements and you know add eight extra inches to it. I also have two pieces of fabric that we'll be working on as we go along. The first thing you need to do is to join the three fabrics together and this is what I have now. My fabric currently is on fold and I'm just here showing you guys the measurement of my marco. My marco is about 20 inches long okay. You want your marco to be 8 inches or 10 inches shorter than the actual length of the fabric that you'll be covering it with. In this video, we are covering the marco with a shell cake. So what I'm doing now is I'm marking the midpoint of my marco. I already folded my a shell cake into two equal parts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just draw a straight line at that middle point of my marco and then place it on my a shell cake. Now, what you want to do is to make sure that the midpoint of your marco aligns with the midpoint of your ashio key. Okay, so that's why I would suggest that you iron the ashio key so you get a crease at the center so it's easy for you to, you know, align the marco to the ashio key. What I'm doing here is showing you how you're going to fold the ashio key over the marco such that it gives you that beautiful zara effect so this is me just showing you one time i'm going to show you once again so we get a hang of the you know process what i'm going to first of all do however is i'm going to apply some glue on the edge of my marco okay this is where my uhu glue will now come into play i'm just applying it at the brim of my marco okay what i'm going to do is i want to flip you know that little space that i have at the bottom right there after the marco flip it over and then glue it onto the base of my marco if you guys don't understand all the things i'm saying please watch closely don't skip the video so you don't miss out any important information and yeah once that is done once you've applied your glue on your marco leave it to get tacky for like maybe 30 seconds and then press on your fabric everything i'm saying here i'm going to you know illustrate on the video so i'm going to keep quiet now i'll let you guys watch and then i'll continue you know walking you through the process While my glue is getting tacky, I'm going to just cut out two pieces of elastic that will, you know, be used in this particular video. And the elastics are about five inches long, okay? The shorter the elastic, the more stretch you get out of it. If the elastic is too long, it won't stretch and the purpose of adding it to your marker will be defeated, okay? So keep your elastic from between four and a half to five inches, okay? Or just feel free to just customize it to your taste now that my glue is tacky i'm just flip, flipping over my 
ash your kit to just place on it and for this bit you just want to just flip over and use your fingers or your hands to just press it onto the glue to make sure that the glue catches the fabric and it doesn't lift off now that i'm done doing that i'm now flipping over the ashoki again and then you see the way i moved it if you didn't get that please rewind so you get the gist now that i'm done i'll flip it over one more time and make sure that i push the ashoki upwards you don't want the the two folds to meet meet each other at the end of your um base okay you want to make sure that the second fold is stopping like at the middle of your ashoki fabric i hope everything i'm saying makes sense so you see the way i'm attaching my elastic now so yeah that's how you want to place it and once that is done you just pull your ashoki over that placement and then take your fabric to your sewing machine but before i get to that i want to insert my elastics at the two ends of my cap and then i'll show you how you take it to your sewing machine to sew Alright guys, so you see the way I'm just trying to place the ashoki on top of each other such that we secure the elastic in between. Okay, watch everything I'm doing closely. I'm going to repeat that same thing on the other side of my ashoki and once that is done, I'm going to sew. Just sew in such a way that I'm going to be able to, you know, secure the elastic inside of this Alazara cap. You see that point where I'm pointing at right there? Exactly, that's where you want to sew. And you're sewing as close to the marker as possible. You can't sew over the marker because of the texture of marker, but you can sew as close to where you place the marker as possible. All right, so I'm going to take it to my sewing machine, sew, and then I'll be back to continue with you guys. All right, guys, so this is what I have now. What I'm going to just do now is I'm going to apply some glue on that opening that I have going on. If you've done everything correctly, you're going to have an opening where you can see your marker peeking through and we don't want that, okay? So what you're going to do is apply your glue of choice at that point and then press your fabric over it such that the fabric and the marker, everything becomes one single piece and there's no, you know, unnecessary situation shape, you know, peeking through. Once that is done, I'm just going to go over it with my hands, make sure that the fabric is lapping over the marker really, really well. And then I'll be on to the next process in this particular video. And what I'm just doing is I'm securing my elastic, okay? If I leave my elastic just dangling, yeah, we are not done, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stretch the elastic a bit, secure it, and then do the exact same thing on both sides of this um, cap that I'm trying to make. Alright guys, so this is what I have now. What I'm going to just do now is to flip my cap right side facing each other and then I'm going to sew. You're sewing in a curved manner. You know, this process is similar to making a turban just that this time we are adding Marco and we are using Ashoki. So I'm just going to sew like a cute little curve and once that is done i'm going to gather my fabric the typical way in which we make turbans okay and here i'm doing um running stitches okay to give me that gathered effect all right i sped up the process because i feel like i've done this repeatedly on the channel if you've not seen my other turban tutorials i'm going to link something on the screen for you feel free to go check it out so it helps you you know get a hang of everything i'm doing so what i'm doing here is just the uh, running stitch that i was talking about and once the running stitch is done i'm going to secure my stitches and then it'll be time for us to move on to the next stage in this tutorial Alright guys, so once I was done doing my gathered stitch, I'm now here, you know, doing my, what's it called, my securing, I'm securing my stitch. So once that is done, I'm going to flip my cap inside out and voila guys, this is what the plain cap looks like. 
some people will say they can stop here and you know rock this as just a cap ball because my clients wanted a double bow situation to be going at going on at the back of the cap i had to work on creating my bow what i'm doing here is i'm simply adjusting my ashoki in such a way that it all lays properly and everything looks nice and smooth this is the fabric that i'm going to be using to make my bow one piece of fabric is 24 inches long and the other is 17 inches long and this is the loop that is going to be at the center of our bow so what i'm going to first of all do is fold this first piece of fabric into two and sew around it and leave some space for flipping it over i've created bows on this channel a couple of times and i believe everyone knows how to create a budget but just in case you don't know how to make it please watch what i'm doing i'm also going to sew around this second piece of fabric leave some space for flipping the fabric inside out after flipping your fabric inside out please don't forget to seal up the opening in order to you know make your bow and for this um, loop all i'm doing is i'm just sewing along the edge flipping it again along the what am i sewing now i'm sewing it just the way I, uh, I illustrated and then I'm going to fold whatever I get into two again to give me my loop. Alright guys, so what I'm doing here now is I'm about to start working on my bow. And all that entails is doing a bit of gathered stitch at the center of the fabric. And then I'm just going to pull on my thread to give my bow. Just in case everything I'm saying doesn't make sense. Like I always say in my videos, I try as much as possible to illustrate. So please, more than you know, listening to me and all that I'm saying, listening is important as well. But watching is more important because you get to see for yourself what I'm doing. So this is exactly what I'm doing here. I'm creating my bow and this is me pulling on my thread. And I'm also, you know, rolling that thread around the center just to make sure that that bow is very distinct and nice. Once I'm satisfied with how, you know, tight the center of my bow is, I'm just going to pass my needle one more time through the center to make sure that my bow doesn't loosen up. And of course, after that, I'm going to secure my thread. This is me just adjusting the bow to make it look nice. And then I'm also taking a look at my cap and figuring out where I want to place, place it at the back of my cap. I think this is what I want it to look like at the end of the day. So what I'm going to do now is to just pass this bow that I made through the loop and this is how i typically do it i fold one edge of the bow such that it flattens out and is able to pass through the loop and then i place the loop nicely at the center of my bow once i was done you know placing the loop and i was happy with how it looked it was now time to attach the bow to the cap for these beads feel free to use either your glue or sew it on for me i used glue and i also sewed it on however i don't know what happened but i lost the footage but yeah I don't think it's anything serious just in case you have any questions on how it goes please drop it in the comment section so this is what my bow looks like after attaching i also did some bedazzling i used some flat bottom beads and some cloth stones at the back of the cap i was going to also bedazzle the body of the cap but i changed my mind <laughs> because i didn't know if my clients would want all that bling bling going on I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial that's all about how to make this ready to wear zara cap if you enjoyed watching please 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 don't forget to hit the like button okay that button is very important also feel free to drop me comments let me know what you think about this cap if you have video requests for me please drop it in the comments as well or send me a message on instagram if you're not following my instagram page you get bonus content on there as well so feel free to go check out my instagram page it's always linked on the top left corner of your screen. Don't forget to share this video with your friends. Sharing is caring, okay? Follow, subscribe to the channel if you're yet to. And yeah, guys, I can't wait to see you in another tutorial. Bye!